Hello and welcome to today's exciting episode and welcome to the chaos. I'm sorting out my fashion fabrics, comering them and comering my UFOs. If that wasn't enough, then and right at the end, I make up a couple of my unfinished projects and show them to you. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. So if you watched my... um what's happening this month for April, you'll know that I very foolishly decided that I was going to comery all my scraps and my fashion fabrics. So what I did was I got them all out. There's, um, wait for it, there's four different boxes. And, um, oh, goodness me, honestly, the mess that I made. Oh, and there's also that extra bag at the top because, you know, four boxes clearly wasn't enough. Anyway, so I got them out. I feel like you can sort of see these boxes. Um, the, there's two that have bits of scraps. So that one's clearly a scraps. And I think the bottom two are sort of dresses that I've cut out the pieces of, but I haven't made the dresses. So, oh. Uh, such a mess. Anyway, I also decided that I wanted to move the fashion fabrics from here down to the bottom one, just so that every time I'm sitting at my workbench, they're not there waiting for me to make them up because I kind of want to use up all my fabric stash this month. So there we go. I moved them all down to the bottom and slightly rearranged them. And this is me sitting on the floor. So now it was time to get out the four boxes. And I, yeah, I just tipped them I put lay down some black fabric and I just tipped them all over the floor and um yeah which didn't help didn't help matters at all but um yeah and then my, my idea was to put on to one side all the bits that are parts of a dress so I can just sew them up so there you see them on the left and then um yeah, I, I didn't film it because it was too painful. Oh, and there ended up being three bits of fabric in there. So the bees, the yellow with the butterflies and the beige with the wisteria, they were in there as well for some reason. And um, yeah, oh, and though I also, in the half-made, unmade dresses, there were also five or six, six half-made shirts. So I've put them on the rack and um, I will get to them later on this month. But for now, I just put them aside. And um, yeah, so these are the scrap bags. And I, so I sorted out all, which ones were scraps, which ones were pieces of dresses. And then I put all the scraps into bags. So this is the pretty and pink one. The next to it is a blue. Then I've got a beige with some apricots in there and peaches. And there's also a big pale um, mid green one. This is sort of purples and dark pinks. And then I've got a red one with coral and there's a sort of hot pink in there, but it's more corally. And this is a sage green, so lighter greens with sage in there. And this is the bag of mustard and bag of dark green with some blacks in there. And um, what else have I got? And there's a few more. And then this one is um, white base with color on it because I've noticed in the patchwork dresses I've made the ones with a white background they really stand out and they sort of catch your eye in a wrong way so I think I'll just put them in their bag of their own whether I'll use them or not or and just throw them away I don't know and orange didn't really go with anything and there's also a bag of black so I'll just use that in like the dark blue the um the purple one or the dark green one but whichever one needs it I'll use it so they're all done and they're going to be turned into dresses I think probably or maybe jackets I don't know but I'm keeping them for now and th this is the pile I'm left with <laughs> it's just ridiculous so as I was sort of moving them I accidentally sort of knock the pile over so they're all completely mixed around now so I have to go through and put all the matching pieces with each other so that we can see what is here yeah that task seems a little too daunting I'm going to put it off I'm going to I've got the um storage boxes just on the ground so I think I'll just scooch them over and put them back into the boxes. I'll pile them all really high in one box. And I will do the tweeds because, um, yeah, it seems easier. Okay. <sighs> Random bits of fabric 
cleared away and these are my t boxes of tweeds so we have five of them that is a lot I think there's about 12 or 15 in each box depending on um, some of them are bulky winter tweeds just all wool and others are summer weight tweeds so um, more of a cotton base and yeah they're absolutely gorgeous I have um, worked through quite a few of them though I think I had at least twice as many, not well, I don't know, I think I had, anyway, I had loads more, uh, you know, last year I made quite a few, and or 28 or 30, something like that, and this year I've made a few, I've kind of focused on making dresses to be honest, but um, yeah, so I've decided to keep um, three up there, three of the colourful fabrics, and they're the tweed jackets I'll make this month. The rest I've put in here, and I've sort of put them vaguely in group uh, colour groups. So these are sort of um, pastel ones. I love that aqua silver and white one. It is so pretty. So these are vaguely pastel ones. And this box here is, um, we've got sort of, Brown, purples, browns, um, teal, gold, and um, it makes sense to me. <laughs> Looking at it now, it doesn't make sense at all. And then green and ugly sweater, purple and um, green. And next, um, so these are sort of golden as well as black. And um, next month is black, white, black, black and white and silver so as you can see I love that black and white one with or black and cream with green in it and oh I love this one with charcoal colored ribbons in it gorgeous and that sort of just plain black and white one that's adorable too and these are reds as well as the olive khaki ones I've got a whole month in August which is khaki and olives so I'll be using some of them up then. And this, I'm putting this on top in the same box. It's a sequin fabric, but the pattern on the sequin is tweed. It is so cute. But I, yeah, very difficult to use, but it'll be so cute. Anyway, all I have left is the blue ones. So this one's uh, tulle. And, oh, and I have some cotton ones for doing mock-ups. And the green is the metallic green. I guess I'll just, it's only about half a box worth, not even. So I just popped them in the last box. And now we're blank again. So uh, I guess I have to sort out those other fabrics. It's such a huge job. I think I will leave you for the night. Go and have dinner come back and just sort these off camera and then because I'm losing the light too so in the morning this is my exciting weekend I will um show you how I've sorted them all good morning Ugh, honestly so recap that's what it looked like last you saw and this is what it looks like now okay I guess it doesn't look that much neater but believe me I went through and I checked all the pieces are there and then one of them like when one was missing I had to like this is blue one I found and it had like one inside half of a pocket missing anyway so all the bits are there and um they're each each pile is one type of dress so we'll start with this one here I call this one the bamboo dress because this is the version of it I like the most. I've made a couple step-by-step -step in Vlogmas last year, so go check out that playlist if you want to see. It's Simplicity 9325, and yeah, I've cut out two of those. One's yellow, and it's a rayon cotton mix, and this one is a sage sort of um, greenish rayon and then the next pile is a lot bigger. I think there's six or seven in this one. It's a vintage reprint from the 1950s and it's Butterick um, 6055. And I made this in Pretty in Pink month. So check out the playlist for Pretty in Pink. And I, I love these images and I love the model wearing. She just looks so fabulous. So as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, I'm going to cut out a million. And yeah, I did, but um, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't suit me at all. Like, I don't care if a dress isn't flattering, but I just have really small shoulders and it's made for someone with, like, if you have broad shoulders, this is the perfect dress for you. Oh, this is a Christmas Scandinavian print I bought. I bought it for the moose 
But um, I also love the foxes and the owls on it. And this one, I didn't have enough of either fabric. So I'm using the sort of brighter one on the front and then the mustard and ketchup um, flowers on the back. And then there's a bright orange one, just because, as I said, I love the, the model wearing the sort of corally orange, faded orange one. And this one, they're two different Sally Kelly prints. Again, I didn't have enough of either fabric. So I was like one for the front, one for the back sort of thing. And yeah, so I think what I'll do is make the skirt as is for this dress. But I think I'll maybe do a um, a different bodice for the top just because this one doesn't suit me. I look like a child wearing an adult's clothes. So let's carefully stack these back up in order now that I've painstakingly checked that all the pieces are there. And yeah, I think I actually started filming some of these um, videos too. Oh God. Okay, so the next one, oh my God, I love this one so much. Vintage Vogue pattern V9294. It is a reissue from 1939. So there were people wearing this dress that they made themselves and they went to the pictures in 1939 to see the, the to see Wizard of Oz for the first time. Don't you think that's completely awesome? Anyway, so I tried to find the most vintage sort of fabrics I could for this one. Um, the first one is sort of a greyish seed one. This is a periwinkle one. This one, it's more of a historical motifs on, um, but modern colours. This one is just sort of all different palm leaves. It looks like a glass house at night. This one is moths. Oh, I love this one. I, um, I was going to do the puffy sleeves out of um, pink on glaze, uh, embroidery on glaze. And this one, it's got little space monsters. And, um, but from far away, it looks like, um, China, like, um, blue and white uh, painting or something. I just love it. Anyway, so yeah, that's was going to be those ones. But, um, I don't know. I've, the dress kind of makes me look very young and boyish and athletic and not that that's a bad thing. If that's the way you want to look, then this is a great pattern for you. But just having strangers come up and say things about your physical appearance is just, it's just not appropriate after the age of like three, in my opinion. So I don't think I'll make them up as I originally intended. I think the skirt is fine, but I'll just make a looser um, bodice where it's not flattering at all. So just a standard, um, B double six, double seven, um, you know, a little bit baggy so I can wear a top underneath as well. So, and no collar, just r very, very plain. So, cause I love the fabrics and I do think they'll make pretty dresses, but I just want to scale them down a little bit and yeah. So that's what I'll do with those ones eventually, but I'll put them back for now. Now this tall pile will ignore for the moment because those are the ones I'm going to work on first and um, we'll grab these two piles, which are actually all the same one, but yeah, I had to put them in two piles because it kept falling over. Okay. So these ones here, I also put in the gingerbread one. Um, I'll show you the pattern. This is a vintage Vogue reissue. V9106 from 1952. I absolutely adore this. Every time I mention a pattern, I get asked where my video is on step-by-step -step how to make it. So apologies for those who don't care, but there are a few who do, I know. So um, I made this, there's a step-by-step -step video in the Pretty in Pink, November last year, go to the playlist. Or there's also one um, in Vlogmas last year for December. I made a holly one, which is delightful. I love it. So, um, yeah, so just a range of fabrics. This was actually going to be a gingerbread house dress, like with white beads on top of it and everything. But I ended up making a gingerbread jacket instead, and that took ages. So, um, yeah, I love the skirt, but I, again, I think I'll make a looser bodice for it because the current one is too flattering. So I think I've got a floral that's got browns in it. So I think I'll do that. Not sure about that beige one with the mini dots. This Halloween one here is adorable, but um, I'm not sure there's enough fabric to cut out the... Um, the a new bodice out of the bodice that's already being cut because of the way you have to cut out this particular bodice it's got really sharp um gashes in the bodice that you then gather under the bust 
It's a gorgeous, gorgeous dress. I absolutely love it and totally recommend it, but I've already got a few of them. And it's just, uh, it's too flattering. I want something a little bit baggier. This one here, I just, I was at the point where I knew the bodice wasn't, I love it, but I just want a few baggier dresses as well. So yeah, I've got enough to cut out a, just a standard bodice out of that one. And this one uh, didn't have enough of either of these two fabrics. So um, half is in the hats, vintage hat lady with hats and um, half of it is in the floral with the birds so again I've got the skirt is beautifully cut out I love the skirt and I'm just going to make a plain bodice hopefully I'll use the hats have enough of the hats fabric to do that but um, we'll see and this one again it's half half I love this I'm not sure you can tell but there's gold metallic tiny tiny amount of gold metallic on that floral it's beautiful and this one it's just a jungle fabric with little monkeys in it similar colors yeah I thought look, they looked well together and that's a gingerbread colored floral and then the bright yeah yellow one I love the skirts of them but yeah I'm going to change all the bodices of those so we'll put them away again because I'm not going to do them just yet I'm going to start with the easiest pile these are my Batarik double six double sevens easily my favorite pattern. The first time I made with this was the first video from December last year, so the first Vlogmas video. Um, so these three are all actually based on the Boderick 6677. The middle one is the most straightforward. The yellow one there up on the left, but I didn't do the ruffle and um, I did lining instead of facing uh, um, using bias tape around the neckline and the other two um instead of using the fitted skirt that they made i um just made strips of fabric sewed them together and pleated them down and that's kind of yeah so we've got a mix of these represented here i guess in the pattern illustrations the skirt looks more like an a-line or a yeah but it's kind of if you have a regular size rump then it's kind of fitted and I prefer something that isn't so flattering. And um, yeah, so I went with the baggier skirt. So anyway, here are the ones that I've cut out. So these front ones, these three are, are all um, just a standard small summer dress um, with the semi-fitted skirt. I love this one so much. I think, well, all these three front ones, I think are my favorite. This is a Japanese um, floral. It's so pretty. Blues on a back black back base and um, this one is a Sally Kelly but I I don't know I I could only buy a tiny amount of it so I used some leftover bamboo fabric for the back and um, then we've got an orange floral it's 1970s floral this um, I just wanted to experiment using uh, see what a synthetic fabric looked like and that is a clearance Christmas fabric, uh, Swedish Christmas fabric that I bought. And um, that is a rayon. I wanted to see what it looked like in with rayons. And that's a longer one. So that's more of a ruby dress. If you know my dresses, the longer ones I call ruby ones. And the ones that look more like the original pattern, um, I call the B6677. So this one is another ruby one. It's supposed to look like a top made out of floral and a skirt that's sort of blue denimish. And this one here, I've cut out the skirt, three tiers of a skirt, but I didn't end up cutting out a bodice because I thought maybe I would make it into a skirt, but I don't really want to do that. I'd rather have just a dress. I'm thinking, what should I use for the bodice? Maybe, I mean, it's got some beautiful reds and pinks in there. So any of these three would look fabulous as a bodice. And I do kind of like mixing two clashing, two different florals. So I think those two would look good, but also these two would look really nice together. But anyway, I'm getting carried away. I'm supposed to be making up unfinished things, not cutting out more unfinished things. These two are going to go back in the fabric stash and the two florals. I'll leave those and they can form one more ruby dress. That's going to be adorable. I just know sometimes which ones will go st straight into high rotation. I love navy blue. I know it's one of the world's most boring colors, but I love it so much, probably because it is so boring. And um, yeah, anyway, so I am going to iron all of these and um, some of them, a couple of them have the lining bodice cut out. Most of them don't. So I think I'll start ironing them all. Then when I'm way too over that, I'll cut out the, the lining bodices for each one. 
and then finish ironing and sew these puppies together. Okay, well, I did all the ironing. That was relatively painless, just took a while. And I've divided them into ones with sleeves and bodices that are sleeveless. So I'll, on the sleeveless ones, I'll use the burrito method, this pile here. Now it is time to uh, just write a list of the ones that need lining. And here we go. Um, <laughs> magic. It's actually quite a some time later. So those were the sleeve ones. These are the sleeveless ones. So now I shall, uh, and these are all the skirts. I've put them over on the sideboard. Now it is time to sew all the bodices together. I'll be back. Actually, that's a lot of dresses. So I decided to just do the sleeve ones because the burrito method is a little more complex. So I decided to get rid of all the bodices with the sleeves first and reduce mass. So here they are, they're so pretty. I love the puffy sleeves on that front one. I like them all, but those puffy sleeves are just ridiculously puffy. I love it. So um, the bodices are done. The next step is to sew the skirt, all the bits into the skirt. And once the skirts are made, I'll attach the skirts to each bodice. So here I go. Oh, this is a lot of work. Okay, I'm going. Okay, the skirts are over on the workbench. And then I just basically forgot to film everything. So um, I think the next video um, sewing vlog I do will be the sleeveless dresses of the same pattern. And um, a couple of those have got pockets in them. So I'll show you how to do the burrito method and the pockets in that one. But um, yeah, here we go. I finished four out of five of them here. So yeah, you can see the pockets. They are so cute, those pockets. I don't normally like pockets. And if I have pockets, I put my tissue on my pockets all the time without even remembering. And yeah, inevitably, I sometimes forget to take the tissues out. And then you have to like pick out every little bit of tissue that's gone through the entire wash. And um, yeah, I just find it easier to not have pockets basically and just keep my tissues in my handbag and everything else anyhow that's way too much information so I'm on the last one now so I will go and do that and um yeah it's rayon and I love this print it is so pretty and I think the lining looks gorgeous so I'm thinking about also making a skirt out of this fabric which I could wear over this short dress I think that would be cute anyway all five of the dresses are finally done Thank goodness. Oh my goodness. I, I felt like this video was never going to end. So they are all done. So let's have a look at them. First, look at the synthetic fabric. It's a crepe and um, in sort of camouflage colors. It's a floral print and it's so 1930s, 1940s. It's really pretty and um, it's nice and heavy. And actually, a lot of these dresses I wouldn't wear out without a sash around the waist, but this one, I think, because of the weight of the crepe, it falls really beautifully. It's nice and baggy, and um, yeah, I think I'd definitely wear it out like this. Probably, because um, it's synthetic, I probably wouldn't wear it in hot weather, so I'd probably wear a couple of long sleeve black um, T-shirts underneath and leggings and combat boots. They're they're not real combat boots. They're from the Spanish clothes. Um, shoe brand anyway and um but if I did want to dress it up and make it look a little bit more vintage I would um take my vintage handbag and um yeah wear this I've just got a roll of Burberry ribbon so I think these look really cute together uh, you can't really see the detail from far away but up close you can and yeah I think that looks adorable it sort of defines the waist because the sleeves are so long that um yeah it sort of swamps you but I don't mind that so next we have the green one oh that is so adorably vintage I love this one it is so pretty I'm so happy with the way that that turned out I'm not really a fan of rayon mostly because of the chemicals used in the uh, manufacturing process I know it's technically uh, plant fiber so it's technically natural but the chemicals they use in the manufacturing process ugh. and this is rayon two one um, yard cuts of so it's extra wide 
And yeah, I think if you're making the Butterick 6677 out of rayon, then I could kind of understand why you do the elastic around the waist, sew the elastic in. I'm not going to do it, but I can understand why other people do. And um, yeah, these are just beautiful. So now I've put ties on them. And um, yeah, I wasn't really sure if these fabrics would go together because they definitely aren't similar. But I don't know. I feel like the color palettes are sort of similar, even though the two designs are very different. I don't know. I think they mesh well. Now, normally when I make a ruby dress, so one with three tiers as a skirt instead of that sort of semi-fitted skirt, I try the um, 1950s petticoat underneath it. I wasn't sure about this one, but I just put it on anyway. And I am so in love. This looks adorable. It looks like a painting or a little doll or something. I love this so much. And with my Valentino um, Fleury uh, green handbag, this will look so adorable. And then I just put that one in the background because these three, I just, they turned out so much better than I thought they would. And they look so vintage all three of them i don't really want to take them off the mannequins but i have two more to show you so i guess i will and obviously i still have to do the cuffs and the hems and everything so yeah oh group shot it's so cute okay well eventually i stopped taking footage and photos of those and i put the other two on the mannequin so we've got the one with the blue skirt and the florals um on the right <laughs> and then i'm just going to put a big r on the wall and a big l so i can tell my left from my right and the other one is a really simple um floral and yeah it's so cute now we, um, this is me deciding which sashes to tie on them and um, yeah i've got loads of different florals i do actually i have made um ties for these two but i haven't turned them in the right way stitch hand stitch the end or um iron them yet so i'll just use alternate ones for now and then at the end of the month when i do that everything i've made this month you'll see it with its matching things and i'll have done the um hand stitch the cuffs and the hem by then as well and um yeah but these two sashes are the stand-ins for now and obviously i have the 1950s petticoat under the one with the big blue skirt this is so cute this floral it's so vintage and so sweet i was going to make a shirt out of this um fabric Oh, and this is me deciding that the Burberry ribbon would actually look quite cute with this one as well, which it would. And, um, oh, I love this floral. It's just so adorable. Pastels are so cute. But, um, yeah, anyway, I got distracted, didn't I? Oh, yeah, I was going to, I only bought a yard and a half of that fabric because I was going to make a shirt with it. But it's so cute as a dress. So cute. Okay, I think I need to retire the word cute for a while anyway that's those five done oh, I'm so glad I finally finished something this episode <laughs> I needed a little closure next episode I'll be making the sleeveless ones and oh god then later this month I'll be doing all these dresses or well at some point and also the shirts um, six shirts I also have the two rainbow fabrics I guess um, I still can't decide if I'm going to make them into one big dress or two different things like a shirt and dress or who knows. This Butterick 6677 is a cute dress. So anyway, um, thank you very much for watching uh, me comry my fabric stash and then make up some of my unfinished projects. It was very nice of you to watch. I hope you enjoyed. And um, I am going to skedaddle and m use the burrito method to make up those sleeveless ones. And oh, I'm so happy with these. I'm just so happy with them. Especially the green one. Oh, this one I love. And the camouflage one. Okay, I kind of like them all. Maybe won't wear the one with the big blue skirt and the floral top so much. But I do enjoy it. I love it looking at it, but it's a bit extra for me. I think I'd definitely wear all the others though, quite a lot. Thanks again for watching and I hope you've been inspired to get out your storage box of unfinished projects and get to it. Fix them, finish them, wear them.